Now there's a lot of swirl going around Apple and its take on the credit card industry with its Apple card, which can really be parsed into a few different categories. Either A, you are a points junkie and the thought of earning less than five points per dollar on eBay purchases really kind of makes you sick to your stomach. B, you're an Apple fanboy and you want to give as much money as you can to Tim Cook and the rest of the executive team at Apple. Or C, maybe you just want to look for a good deal. Well, you are in the right place because today I'm going hands on with the Apple card to find out what really differentiates the Apple card from the sea of other credit cards that are out there today. How does the Apple card work and really how do you manage it? In addition to saying whether or not the Apple card is gonna be the best credit card for you and your spending habits. I am Mike and this is Tech 24 seven TV. Hit like, hit subscribe. Now let's get started. So truth be told, I consider myself fitting into all these categories at one point in my life. Now I've collected my fair share of miles and traveled first class to Europe, Asia for almost nothing. I might have actually owned every Apple product that's been made in the past decade or so, much to the best of my wife. And I like to save money when at all possible. Now there's a very good chance if you're an avid collector of points from either maybe your favorite hotel or your favorite airlines, that you know this probably isn't the best card for you and let's just save ourselves both the trouble of the debate. But if you have a narrow set of spending habits, the Apple card really isn't that bad. That's because Apple's weaving the three core principles that the company's really known best for into the card in order to, to differentiate it against the other credit cards and cashback offers that you might find in the marketplace. First and foremost, the card is simple. Both the credit card and the accompanying interface are gonna be designed to be simple and elegant like most Apple products that you find today. Except for the Magic Mouse 2, that's just a disaster, but I digress. Second, it's gonna be transparent. Now what's nice about this is Apple is upfront with its customers and clearly communicates really the important details of signing up for the card, which would include like your credit limit and APR even before you opt into getting the card. Many other cards don't do that. They actually kind of tell you after the fact when you signed up what your APR and what your credit limit is gonna be. Now that in addition to that, the credit card really has zero fees, which includes no annual fee, no late fees, and no international transaction fees which really is kind of hard to find at that $0 price point or that $0 annual fee. Now, the third and probably the most important is that the credit card is private. Now, the Apple card is gonna use on-device machine learning to organize, classify, and track spending right inside the wallet app where you find your Apple card details. Now, this data is protected by the device's secure enclave, making the information only accessible on your iPhone, which is gonna be a detractor there. If you're looking to access it on the web, you cannot because all that information is encrypted on the device. Now, as long as you're based in the US, you can sign up for the Apple Card today using the wallet app. You're gonna need an iPhone 6 or newer and the device must be running iOS 12.4 and up. Now, once you open up the wallet app, you tap on the plus button in the top right-hand corner. You're gonna need to verify a few bits of personal information, including your social security number, your date of birth, and your annual income. You'll receive a credit decision in under 15 seconds, whether or not you're approved, and it's gonna state what your credit card and your APR is. Again, much like I talked about in the beginning, they're giving you that information up front. And this is really where you get to decide as the consumer whether or not you want to go ahead and move forward with the card or not. And this is not very common in the credit card industry. Some people have stated that they were required to submit a copy of their driver's license for proof of identification. Now, that wasn't my experience, nor was it the experience of the 10 or so people that I applied. But let me know in the comments below if that happened to you. Now, after the card is added to your wallet, you are taken right into the Apple Card landing page, which is the wallet app. You're gonna get glanceable information, which including your credit limit, your balance, and it's gonna tell you what your spending trends are. Additionally, this is where you can request a physical credit card if you want to. Now, the, talking about the physical card, in true Apple fashion, the packaging for the Apple card feels extremely premium. It's a very heavy card stock and it carries an embossed Apple logo. And strangely, the sleeve feels very heavy even without the card inserted, but we're gonna talk about that more in a few minutes. The front of the Apple card is gonna be laser etched with the Apple logo and your name in it. It's actually really quite beautiful. It's gonna be this matte white and on the front, you're also gonna see the security chip. The back of the card is gonna have the same laser etching, but it's actually gonna show Apple's partner, which is Goldman Sachs, and in addition to the credit card network, which is MasterCard. Now, if you didn't notice already, the Apple card is completely devoid of a signature panel on the back of the card. It has no credit card number or CVV digits, and there's nothing about contacting customer service. As I alluded to before, the card cannot be activated unless the Apple card is inserted inside the accompanying sleeve that it's shipped for. Now, there's something really special about this sleeve. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this apart So here we see an NFC chip that's actually embedded into the sleeve, which helps you activate the card. That's because Apple can verify that the card owner has possession of the card because of the proximity needed to read the NFC tag. The card itself does not have NFC based on the lack of readability from the card, either before or after the card has been activated. Now you're gonna find a couple novel approaches to the user interface, including the way that the Apple card changes color to reflect the categories 
where you're spending your money. Now I can just see Apple trying to gamify, see if I can make my car you know, either, you know, all of a uniform color. After you partially or fully pay the credit card, the color of the card resets back to white and then slowly fades into your current spending categories. Now, personally speaking, I think one of the less talked about features is probably one of the most valuable or most helpful, in my opinion, and that's gonna be the due date. Apple makes this dead simple. When you go ahead and set up your card, your due date is the end of the, of the month. As for card benefits, purchases made using the Apple Card will earn between one and 3% cash back, and that really depends on how you're actually paying for things. Now, the cash back is gonna be paid daily, and there's no limit to the spending categories like you might find on other credit cards. Now, there's 3% cash back for all Apple-related purchases made using Apple Pay. This includes buying an iPhone, you know, choosing buying a computer, an accessory from the Apple Store, and it doesn't matter whether you buy it in person or online, but you do have to use Apple Pay. But it's worth noting that it's not really clear at this point whether device financing through the iPhone upgrade program is included at this point. But if you were able to upgrade your payment for the iPhone upgrade program, let me know in the comments below what percentage cash back that you received. The 3% cash back is also going to apply to all either single app purchases or recurring app purchases made through the App Store, and in addition to movies, books, games, and all that other stuff you can purchase, as well as Apple Music subscriptions and a few select in-app purchases with Uber and Uber Eats. Now, I really don't see any reason why Apple would include the subscriptions to Apple TV and Apple Arcade, and even the new streaming service like Disney Plus, which is going to be integrated in Apple TV, which you can sign up for, but we'll know more at next month's iPhone event, which is rumored to be September 10th make sure you're subscribed with notifications for the iPhone Pro and iOS 13 coverage. Now you're gonna earn 2% cash back for all their purchases made through either Apple Pay, in-app, or in-person, or on the web. Finally, you're gonna earn 1% cash back on any purchases made with a physical card where you know where you're swiping it, or on websites that don't accept Apple Pay at this point. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Apple Card is really not perfect and there are a few drawbacks. Namely, first of all, the 1% cash back when using the physical card, is mediocre at best, and there are a lot of other cards that offer a better cashback rate. And honestly, you should avoid using the physical card unless you're trying to impress someone or you really just don't care about the rewards. Second, as a card owner, I can't add a second person like my wife or even a family member as an authorized user like you can with almost every other credit card that is out there today. And finally, I think the biggest drawback of the Apple Card is that you don't have the ability to pull spending data out of the wallet app Maybe if you want to have it analyzed, you know, in either you need a budget or in Quicken or other apps like that. Now, it really begs the question, in what situations does using the Apple Card make sense? So if you subscribe to a number of different Apple services or frequently buy content through the App Store like I do, this is probably the best card for you because of the 3% cash back and the zero cost in order to go ahead and get the card. For me, I subscribe to a number of different services that are gonna be built through Apple, including my Apple Music family subscription for $14.99 a month, two terabytes of iCloud storage for $9.99 a month, HBO, I think at $14.99. I have Apple Care on my iPad and on my watch, a few different yearly app subscriptions like Carrot Weather and Day One, in addition to the fact that I've been known to compulsively buy movies on iTunes. I think I'm making around 300 right now. Let me know where you're at. So my monthly spend with Apple is roughly between $60 and $100 a month, and at that rate, I'm earning around $30 a year in cashback rewards. If I was using another credit card, maybe like the Chase Sapphire card, I would be getting somewhere around a thousand points. And those thousand points are earned kind of conservatively between a penny and a penny and a half, which is roughly 10 to $15. So again, it's not, not really a bad value if you're spending in the right categories. So it's a bit of a toss up when it comes to purchasing Apple hardware using the Apple card, because more often than not, you can find great deals on Apple hardware through like maybe Best Buy, Amazon, or other third-party sites. That means if you're like you're an Amazon Prime subscriber and you have the Amazon Prime Rewards credit card through Chase, if I'm not mistaken, you're gonna get something like 5% cash back on all Amazon eligible purchases. While the 5% at Amazon is gonna be better than the Apple Cards offers, you need to have Amazon Prime, which is gonna function as the pseudo annual credit card fee. Now you'll need to determine what's really gonna be better for you, the Amazon gift card, which you're getting from the cash back or the straight cash back from Apple. Otherwise, using the physical Apple Card is really gonna be a hard pass almost every other circumstance due to the low cashback earn rate, which it makes sense, right? Apple wants to discourage this behavior by disincentivizing you and me from making purchases with the physical card because it's really not as profitable for Apple compared to other payment channels. So at the end of the day, the Apple Card is simply just another credit card here. The nuanced difference here is that the Apple Card is tailored to benefit people like me and maybe even you who already live in the Apple ecosystem and we are deeply integrated into the products that we have. So now does the Apple Card make sense for everyone? And the answer is no, it does not, absolutely not. But like with all other Apple products, the Apple Card is an easy decision because it offers really the same high degree of integration across a various ecosystem of products, right? That you are out there today, while highlighting simplicity, transparency, and privacy as the paramount features. And if you're anything like me, you probably already prioritize those features, which is why you're considering the card in the first place. But the trade-off with the Apple Card is that with all other products in the ecosystem, this card is designed to keep you there, right? It's gonna be complimentary to your iPhone, 
making it that much more difficult when you want to leave the Apple ecosystem. That wraps it up for me, folks. I am Mike, and I will talk to you in the next one. What's going on, everyone? Thank you very much for watching my video on the Apple Card. Now, whether or not you are in the US for the launch of the Apple Card, let me know, are you excited by the premise of what the Apple Card offers, or is it really just another credit card? Let me know in the comments below. Hit like, hit subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one.